Welcome to GC Cars, my name is Eric and this is the 2022 Volvo V90 Cross Country B6. The B6 is a new, um, the new drivetrain combination available in this Volvo V90 Cross Country. Also, the regular V90, dead in North America, you can't get it anymore. It's only the Cross Country now, so it's a lifted version, which uh, still looks pretty good, but we'll get to that. And yeah, so we got a 2 liter supercharged, turbocharged, mild hybrid in line 4, and that's new. Let's start off with the X here, then we will talk about the interior, drive it, and sum it up in the final thoughts, if you should drive it or go for a different vehicle. Oh, and of course, also after we've had the rain uh, last week, now winter's here now. Winter's probably here. So excuse that this car looks filthy, but there's absolutely nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. So yeah, let's start talking about it. The color we have, Thunder Grey, which I think is a great color name, considering you have Thor's Hammer, Headlights, Mjolnir, I have no idea how that thing is called in the, in the whatever language it is, Nordic. Don't, don't, don't quote me that. But yeah, like I said, V90. Uh, so we got the wagon and we got the cl plastic cladding here on the cross country. I think the, the V60 just is a little better proportioned, but I still I still think this looks really, really good. Just like, just like in the XC90, I really like the front end with kind of this indented grill. It just looks really, really good. And then we have kind of aggressive, but still understated design. The wheels are yeah, a little boring, but, but they work. They work. I mean, it's, it's it's understated, like I said, right? It's it's a wagon. I love wagons. Wagons are beautiful, beautiful little cars. And in terms of the back, we have, well, once again, it's kind of typical typical Volvo. It says cross country in the back. That bird sounds nasty. I don't know if you can hear that one, but it's like that, the the, the American sound. Like the it's not the bald eagle. It doesn't make that sound. It's a some kind of falcon, I think. But it sounds pretty cool. Anyhow, it keeps doing the noise. So the cool thing about the bag, though, is the animation, the kind of light animation it does when you lock and unlock it. Because when you do it, the lights flash, and then they just kind of go from down all the way up and light up. And if you turn them off, they go down, they go out from top to bottom. It looks pretty cool. But um, I want to talk more about the interior and get out of this, because the interior is actually really nice, warm, and comfy. So uh, let's, let's, let's do that. I want to first of all, of course, get the snow off my shoes. Okay, so let's close the door, first of all. Turn on the heated seats and the um, heated seats, there we go. And the massaging seats, because we've got massaging seats. Because I managed to lock my back somehow while setting up the camera at my young 22 years of age. So um, yeah, Volvo, please fix my back. Whew. Okay, let's talk interior. Um, very similar to the XC90. I'm sorry, I'm just open this up a little. Very similar to the XC90 that we've had, which is a good thing because it is very, very nice um, interior. This one, we don't have the wool seats. We actually have the leather seats. And what we get with the leather seats with the packaging aspect here is um, heated, cooled, as well as massaging seats. Like I said, I just turn on the massaging seats. It's only the backrest on like the, um, the E63 we had, which of course was a little more expensive. Um, it doesn't massage your bum, but honestly, the, the back is the important part. And um, it is really nice. These seats are actually really, really comfortable. I like them a lot. I just wish the, the heating seat, the heated seats, which is, I don't know, it's not really that hot and it takes a long time to heat up. Like in a general motors vehicle, you press heated seats in like in a minute. It's hot, also in like a Kia. Um, this one takes like maybe like six minutes until you start noticing it and then it never really gets that hot. It would be a little nicer, but it's still good to have. Um, cooled seats, I like it. Then in, in terms of materials, obviously, uh, very good. I don't really need to say much about this. Very, very good materials, very nice in this. What we have in here, especially on the cover here, is so nice. Like it's such a good texture. It's like you can, you can really feel the texture of the wood, deep grain on there, it looks, really nice i like this a lot and then just a few more things i want to talk about that are specific to this uh v90 compared to the xc90 if you want to have a bit of a deeper dive dive uh, look at my xc90 review just in the top right hand corner for you uh, so we got the gauge cluster here which is a digital gauge cluster and the resolution is really good and you can have google maps on here because you have google maps integrated you don't need your phone for that and you also have the google assistant integrated um, you can log in with your google account and then you have like access to all your calendars and everything and you can you can google stuff you can ask your vehicle stuff which is really really nice but the screen is super high res 
I like it a lot. Just the only thing, uh, there's a bit of an issue with Google Maps that also was on the Android app for years. And I, I don't know if it's just not there anymore because I got a modern phone or it's still an issue with like not as fast phones. But you know when sometimes the, the, the squares of like the map don't load in? So sometimes you have a blank map, sometimes it just kind of refreshes, sometimes there's like a square missing. So that still happens here. Is a bit distracting sometimes, but it's not too big of an issue. The infotainment is less intuitive than in the XC90. Still pretty quick, has the features you want. Just just like in the XC90, I don't like that we have the heated seats, heated steering wheel and cooled uh, ventilated seats are buttons. It would be fine if they would be actually like react to what I'm doing, but they take forever, especially, it's funny, the, the heated seats work pretty well, like if I press them, it works, but the heated steering wheel often takes a second or two to react. So then you're just like, you know, on a highway, it's like, uh, dip, dip, dip. Did I hit it three times? Oh no, I didn't hit it three times, so it's still one. Then you start pressing it again, but it was just lagging. So you hit it three times to turn it off, and now you just turn it back on again, so you have to do it again. It's just like, just, just give us physical buttons. I know it's kind of hard to integrate here, but like, maybe I'll do it. Not too big of an issue though. It works, it still works reasonably fine. It's nice, Bowers and Wilkins has an awesome system. I love it. Our phone charger up here, uh, just like in the XC90, it's way too good of a spot. It's perfect, but I don't like it because it's too good and encourages texting and driving. And the wireless charging didn't really work all the time. I don't know what was up with that, but let's just say that's a unique issue with this vehicle, maybe. And lastly, in front is the controls for our sunroof. They're so good because normally in a car you have like one or two buttons and it's just always kind of awkward to press them because then you have to push them that way and either you turn your hand and just like twist like everything or you do it like sideways. This one is touch, it's a touch control and it's so easy to use. Of course, don't want to open it all the way now. It's so easy to use. I just wasn't all the way in there. And it's just so good and it's so intuitive. This is the best way I've ever seen sunroof controls being integrated. Good job, Volvo. Nice and innovative. In, in, innovative. Innovative. Pardon me. Now, let's take a look at the second row and then, oh God, that was the back. Then, 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 then we're going to take a look at the trunk and then we're going to drive. So let's see how I get my logged back out of here. Okay, this, this will be fun. So, oh, okay, so far so good. Okay, yeah. Okay. See you in the back. Okay, climbing into the... This will be very ungraceful. There we go. Remember, locked back. This is not how you normally enter. Ah, now in the back though. First of all, heated seats because we also have them in the back here. And uh, it is very nice. Look at the room I have. I mean, it's a V90. You'd expect me to have a lot of room sitting behind myself at five foot seven, but there's just so much room back here it is so comfy we have the giant sunroof set banning all the way from the a pillar to just above my head and it's super super nice we have integrated sunshades if it gets a little there you go if it gets a little warm or bright but then you may want to sleep we have netting behind this i like netting more than pouches in terms of storage because pouches you can just you know, the crumbs will get in there and it's kind of filthy after a while. Netting is way easy to clean. And we got two USB-Cs too. So this is actually a very, very nice space to be. Of course, if you want to have uh, cup holders, more cup holders, you can have them here. You just push and they plop out. Then you have a little tray here. Very nice, rubberized, nothing's going to slide around on that. Oh. And no, this is, this is really good. There's so much space. And one more feature, uh, you can also do it from the infotainment in front, but if you'd like to be slapped on the back, you can just press this button. Where is it? There. And get slapped on the back. You know, of course, this, this has other usage uses this. But um, you can just, you can fold them down and you can collapse all the seats. And the isofix mounts, really easy to reach. Very well thought out as well. So let's take a quick look at the trunk and then we'll go driving. Yeah, I won't be able to lie down on this for the joke today. Um, but we have pretty good uh, space here in the trunk. Just like this, 19.8 cubic feet of space. And if we were to lay down the second row seats, we get 69.0 cubic feet of space. So we got a nice amount of space here. And we also, of course, have grocery bag hangers, just like in the XC90, which is really good. Two on each side, grocery bag is really 
kind of a tiny thing, but I think they're essential and every car should have them. And unfortunately, not everybody does include them. And then we have, a, of course, a little privacy cover here so nobody can peek into your Volvo's back whenever you park somewhere. And a really good addition that I like a lot is this little cage. To put it down fully, we'd need to take out the cover, but you get the idea. And what does it do? Well, simply, if you're in an accident or in a rollover, this prevents luggage and other items to fall into the cabin and potentially hit uh, passengers. So that's a very good addition because I know people that have this as a concern in hatchbacks and wagons and SUVs and they're kind of concerned. You know, what, what happens in a rollover? I don't want luggage to fall in front. Well, there you go. Volvo thought of it because as always, Volvo takes safety seriously. So um, yeah, with that being said, let's go driving, but we still got to take somewhat of a joke. So let's do a creative transition where I just walk past. I'm gonna transition to the driving. Okay, now on the road here in the Volvo V90 Cross Country B6. And as always, we're gonna start off with a little bit of a launch. We don't have drive modes except for off-road and I don't have control over stability control or traction control. So we've gotta see how the car handles it with everything on. And it's uh, right around freezing. It is about freezing and it's snowing and rainy. So uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm gonna let the car do it. Brake torque, about 2000 RPM. 30, 40, 50, 60 kilometers an hour. That was not bad. That was not bad in very bad conditions. Um, and yeah, pretty good acceleration. So we have a two liter, like I said in the beginning, two liter turbocharged and supercharged mild hybrid um, inline four. So quite the complicated engine once again. The one in the XC90 was a full unplug in hybrid. This is just a mild hybrid. And um, quickly mild hybrid, you do notice very little of that you have pretty good fuel economy we'll get to that later and um, during start and stop you notice that when you start the engine again it is very noticeably unnoticeable if you know what i mean normally start and stop is kind of like Neh. i don't know you do feel it but this one i for the first day before i looked everything up i thought it didn't have start stop it was just so smooth <laughs> anyhow uh 310 horsepower 200 no sorry 310 pound feet of torque and 295 feet of torque sent through an eight-speed automatic and uh, we got like honestly good amounts of power it's a very nice power delivery that this track train has so if we accelerate there's power very early i mean supercharged turbocharged hybrid it should have power very early but you don't need to rev it out you always have a very healthy amount and honestly 300 horsepower is kind of the sweet spot in terms of horsepower i find you still have enough power so you you know you can have a lot of fun you do feel it but at the same time it's not the amount of power that just sends you like <laughs> straight to jail if you try to you know have a little bit of fun so i always like 300 horsepower and it's just like i said it's a very nice power delivery very torquey so if you're on the highway you need to get going or let's say we've got to get going here there's the torque and it's just it just drives, drives very nicely this the uh, eight speed automatic shifts very smoothly and of course we can shift ourselves but first of all i do want to test what the transmission does as always, 50 kilometers an hour we're going to drive and then we're going to floor it, just under 50 right now. Downshift and we go. Yep, pretty good reaction, pretty good reaction time, very quick, very smooth. And like I said, the, uh, the transmission shifts very smoothly, it's barely noticeable at all that it's doing something. I like driving this, honestly I like driving this. Real quick, just uh, manual shifting, we have fourth, third, second, third fourth fifth decent um although i don't think you'll ever use it really <laughs> transmission is doing a good job by itself so yeah i like how it drives in that regard but let's get to um let's get to like suspension and ride quality and just like in the xc90 it rides really nicely we don't have unlike in the xc90 we don't have like any air suspension so this is not quite on the level of the xc90 it's quite a bit away from that actually because the xc90 was just so good uh, but it is still very comfy uh, very comfy very comfy i mean um so we're going to turn left here up ahead and then we're going to have like the harsh test of the terrible road that we always drive on this is really like we have this is a really good area <laughs> you can do like all the little tests that i want to do and let's see terrible road So yeah, there are vibrations. I feel the vibrations, but it's really mostly a jitter that gets through to me. It's not really 
uncomfortable and this is oh okay i'm actually dodging potholes those weren't there before <laughs> i think the roaches kind of died in the last few days um that was that was some bad potholes uh, potholes um anyhow it does very well the suspension is comfy the suspension is nice and i think for eighty thousand dollars after um after delivery pretty much i think it's an adequate i wouldn't say it's like amazing but it's certainly nice uh what is really good though is noise vibration and harshness in terms of um what do you hear and how much you hear i didn't like how the internal combustion engine it's the same engine sounded in the xc90 it was very coarse sounding it was a lot of you know, it's like it, i compared it to chewbacca <laughs> in terms of how it sounds and it's not the case here anymore they they managed to isolate the engine a little better and you don't have this, this kind of this coarseness behind the engine sound is sounds very it's very subdued don't really hear it too much unless of course like we did earlier uh, if you're floored then you will hear it but other than that it's very subdued you're very well isolated from the outside there aren't really many noises coming through and combined with the bows and wilkins like i already mentioned uh, that's an option it's like three grand it's a very very good system the xc90 had a bit more a bit more clarity with the balance and wilkins but this is still very very good this is still a very good system and i would still spend the money on the bows and wilkins because listening to music with it is just very enjoyable and like i said combine that with the low noise floor in this vehicle and it's very nice and of course it's always a little hard to compare because now we're on winter tires so this inherently has it a little harder than everything i compared to uh, i can compare it to from the last few months because well they didn't they weren't on winter tires the conditions were better so this naturally is a bit more noisy but it's still very nice so if it were summer honestly i would be very very happy and i am very happy Good power. I like 300 horsepower. I like 300 horsepower. It's really the sweet spot. It is really just the perfect amount of horsepower for a normal car. I mean, of course, with EVs coming up, the car's going to be heavier, so then probably 400 horsepower will be like that, the sweet spot. But right now, for an internal combustion engine, 300 horsepower is just so good. I love it. Anyhow, uh, really the last thing I want to talk about, we're really going through this quickly again, is tech. And... We talked about the infotainment more in the in the in the interior segment so i just focus on how it is to drive and the driving tech and the driving assist so we got a lot of birds in front get on the road guys there's literally a field to my left and to my right just chilling there so i'm sorry i was saying yes um driving tech so really the most notice uh, notable thing here is the pilot assist so the the pilot assist is a semi-autonomous system that actively centers us in our lane. You can do it pretty much everywhere. You don't need to do it on the highway. Um, it's basically, it's joined with the adaptive cruise control. So as soon as you put that on, your pilot assist turns on and then it'll automatically center you in your lane. And it works amazingly well. Um, I always praise the Hyundai Kia system, which is really, really good. But this is just better. This is just straight up better. I can activate it here. Let's see if it takes over. It's always in those conditions. Sometimes it takes a little while to see the lanes. And we'll, yeah, there we go. Of course, it's a semi-autonomous system, so you got to put your hands on the steering wheel at all times. You got to stay alert and awake. Well, obviously awake, but you got to stay alert. So make sure that you're in control. This is not meant to take over fully. It's just an assist. I'm doing this to show you. Um, I have a full-on PV test drive on the highway, by the way, where we test a little more in depth how well it works. But it is really good. Like I said, I like the Hyundai Kia Genesis system, but this is just straight up better. And the Mercedes, the Stronic Plus with um, steering assist that I had in the 63S was really good as well. I can't quite say which one was better, but I feel like the pilot assist in this V90 cross country, just a tiny bit better. It doesn't switch lanes, unlike the AMG, but it's just, I feel like it's more solid in like the basic function of, you know, centering in the lane very good job i wish the adaptive cruise control would look would look a little further ahead sometimes it just you know when when a slower car is coming up it just very very um very suddenly starts breaking it's not too bad because some other systems look up ahead a little further you know go get a throttle a little earlier and just smoothen out the transitions but other than that you know driving tech is really really good and of course we got like all the all the assist systems you want like a 
blind spot monitoring, we have emergency braking systems, all that works really, really well. Not that I tested the emergency braking system, <laughs> but I had a pop-up once on me, which was funnily enough when I had the pilot assist and the adaptive cruise control on, so it kind of complained about its own driving there. But, um, no, very good assist systems and assist suite, so you'll, you'll be happy. You'll be happy with it. And lastly, uh, just taking the XC90 visibility, is really good that actually still hurt my back my back is better but this still hurt um so <laughs> visibility is really good you can see a lot out of the speed 90 and like i said in the xc90 right that's just kind of this component of volvo really wanting to make a safe car and once again i think they succeeded in that but that also already sums up the driving part i, I talked about everything i wanted to talk about so why don't we just sum it all up in the final thoughts this 2022 Volvo V90 Cross Country is all about its new V6 drivetrain. After a week's worth of driving, I managed to achieve 11.1 .1 liters per 100 kilometers, which might sound high, but actually is really good once you factor in the fact that this is about 70% city and includes hours of idling for filming purposes. The powertrain itself drives really well, has good power delivery, and combined with the 8-speed automatic and a well-tuned suspension, delivers a smooth driving experience. And aside from the powertrain, Volvo once again created an interior full of wonderfully diverse, high quality materials that make for one of the nicest cabins in the market, albeit with an infotainment that could use a few improvements. Like all Volvos, this V90 is understated excellence. Is it as flashy as a Mercedes? No, but it doesn't aspire to be. And at a price of $79,465 Canadian, after destination charges, this 2022 Volvo V90 cross country is anything but cheap but for almost 80 grand, you get plenty of Scandinavian style and luxury. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with this V90 cross country. Good job, Volvo. And with that, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you liked it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell because we upload videos every single week and review everything from budget cars to luxury cars, sports cars, and everything in between. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it and I hope I'll see you in the next one. Thank you and goodbye.